Hey everybody, it's Chris and I'm here with Jose and we're going to be talking about UX design. How do you turn UX design into a website? That's what I want to know. I think that's what you guys want to know, so we're going to roll with that. Stick around, guys. Let me try this again. I want you guys to listen to me. Yeah. I design sandwiches. My name is Jose Caballet and I talk about the business of design. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about a lot of stuff. My name is Chris Doe and I talk about the business of design. At the center of this operating system, it's about understanding. <clears throat> Jose, can we just tell them what the show title is? I hate you, dude. You are watching The Process. Woo! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we've got a couple of people in the studio audience today. We, we hope that they're going to chime in. Hey, I'm Rishab. So what exactly is user experience? Got it. So the question is, what exactly is user experience? Should I write the question down? And yeah, write it down. Okay, yeah, and then, then put it you, up. you keep going. Boom. Run now. So one of the challenges in defining UX is simple. Is that uh, I was using the metaphor of a film. When you say, do you know what a film is? People think of the end product, which is you know moving pictures with music and dialogue, and it's emotional. Uh, when you say filmmaking, which is all the components that go into filmmaking, things like you know uh, the cinematography, the, the the set design, the script, the uh, all what, what else? Casting. Uh, casting. What else do you guys Art do? Art direction, production design, Boards, visual effects, storyboards, visual effects. All those things collectively are filmmaking. Uh, so when it's the process. So UX describes a collection of activities that you do in order to create, primarily on digital devices, uh, experiences for users, which is what people call somebody who uses a digital device. So uh, everything from research to, uh, uh, to the actual definition of what you're doing, to customer profiles, to the actual design of the UI, of the user interface itself, visual design, uh, user testing, development, all of it falls under user experience. Now user experience design, the actual definition of a user experience, is what we're going to talk about today. Is that a good uh, answer? Yeah. Excellent. So Chris, the goal, what we want to do today, and um, I think your screen is actually working, yep. um, is to, we're working on a real project. So we're going to be working on the school's website, the schoolrocks.com. Oh, okay, you want to pull up that? Yeah, so if you can pull that up. Sure. And what I want to do today is to take uh, the, the user profiles that we have, and we're going to talk about them briefly, and then we're going to start sketching out a home page. And I want people to understand, uh, because I'm going to talk it, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to actually uh, talk through my process so that people understand how I'm taking those and what it is that I'm doing with, with the customer profiles in order to get to that. So this is the current Should site. Should we cut to the yeah, screen, let's cut to the current site. So we've got, we get a lot of compliments on the site and on what, what it does. We also get a lot of questions about where can we get your product, and it's a little tiny link that says shop. We also have a lot of disparate sites and a lot of different things that we're using. Um, so for us as, uh, uh, as founders, Chris, what are the goals that we're trying to accomplish? Why are we redoing the actual website? We're trying to A, communicate our product mm -hmm. more clearly. Yep. We're also trying to identify who our customers are. We need to speak to them directly and solve their problems. Okay. And if we can do that, hopefully more people get interested in the products and the things that we're doing. So what he said is that he wants to fine tune, and what I, what I want to do too, is fine tune what we're saying to our actual customers that we're discovering more and more who they are more specifically. And then second, we want to really highlight our products so that we can sell more and have the business increase in terms of uh, the, the financial aspects of it. Right, because at the end of the day, we believe in the product that we are making, building, and developing. And we want to make sure that the people, our audience that we're speaking to, understand what it is that we're doing. Because if not, there's the disconnect, and then they won't see the value. Great, so let's start, let's start with that. Okay. So what we're going to start with is two, uh, let's do two customer profiles uh, that we already have really seen from all the feedback and all of the uh, work that we do online, meaning the interaction that we have with people. Who are those two? Uh, and Aaron, you know who they are. Uh, who are they, the two primary customers that we have right now? Uh, the freelancer. Mm-hmm. And what else? Uh, the agency. You talk a lot about yeah. The and I want to do something that's truncated today because what's interesting is that uh, in how we do user experience, we define a customer in the story, uh, the demographics, the story, what their challenges or obstacles are, and what their needs are in order to meet those. But let's just distill it down to those two things. Let's distill it to if it's really basic, like if we were to do real quick up here, just the name and age. 
And then the only two things that I think would be interesting to do is what are their challenges or what's their story? Like, what's your story, Morning Glory? And then in order to meet those challenges, you can call them solutions, you can call them needs, you can call them whatever you want. Let's actually call them solutions just for fun, just so that it's really specific. In how we do it in our product called Core, we call this needs. Chris calls it something slightly different, but it's all the same thing. Here's their story. Like, what's the story of this particular user? All right, Chris, so let's give an age. How old is this person? We were here once. Early 30s. Early 30s, so 33? Sure. OK. Male. Are we going to build out the whole profile? No, we're just going to okay. give him a name. Tim, three letters. Tim. Let's call it Tim. Tim Carson, making that up. Perfect. Great. And uh, he, what, what are the challenges that he's having? Now, we're basing this, I'm going to get back on camera here. We're basing this on you. We're basing this on what we're seeing. Every time that you buy a school product, I ask you specifically, I email back and say, why did you buy the product? What challenges are you going through? If you bought one, let us know in the comments. And you, most of you, let's say 90% answer that question. What are the challenges they're going through, Chris? Challenges they're going through is they're, they're transitioning from being a freelancer who works for other companies to having their own clients. And what they want to do is graduate, basically, from working out of their home studio into having an office and having some employees. It could be an intern or maybe a junior designer or a salesperson. They want to grow. And they need to grow because at this phase in their life, at 33, they're, they're either married or about to have a kid or something like that. And so their financial needs are much different today than they were when they were in their 20s. So they have to do it. And, and there's one other challenge that they always pose, which I had and you've had when you're doing digital projects. What happens when the digital projects get bigger? It becomes unwieldy. Unwieldy. They become complexity and pain. So people are really scared of it. By the way, I'm scared of it. <laughs> and the reason I start, I, I really think the schools, what we do is important is because it's all about the pain. Of I think one of the challenges they also have is they wonder, is there a better way? Can I do this better? Like, how do you get from doing five to $10,000 websites to 40, 50, to $100,000, $200,000 websites? So they need so efficiency. Well, and, uh, and also be able to attract bigger clients. I love that. So, so, so growth, complexity, is there a better way? And uh, well, let's call it also big, bigger clients. All right, so let's transition real quick into solutions. Uh, what are solutions or what do they need in order to be able to, and I like what Christo talks about where it's like tit for tat. So like if you need to transition That's Jose's from, term, by the way. Tit for tat is my term, OK. Yeah, it is. Transition from small to larger, what does he need? To grow, what does he need? For complexity, what does he need? Is there a better way, what does he need? Like can we say, what are the things that are solutions for those problems? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's so the first one. Uh, so and, and you guys can chime in, You guys in can too, chime please. in. All right. Archie, what does he need in order to transition from small to extra large? What do you need to get your practice to be bigger? It's. Clients, okay. <laughs> so sales. Is yeah, I like choked that one out. Like, uh, come on, clients. <laughs> so a sales yeah. process that sales you can process. follow. Great, awesome. Thank you so much. Sales process. I appreciate that. And pay attention if you're watching this. Pay attention to my language as I'm facilitating, because your job as a designer to level up is to do the same thing I'm doing. So I say thank you very much. Great, awesome idea. Give me another one. Go. And Chris is my. What are we talking about now? What are things to grow and to increase sales process? What else does he need to grow? Tim Carson. Tim needs to, hmm, this is a tricky one. We had this call the other day. We had this call with, with, with Ben. We had this call with uh, Elise. Mm -hmm. And they told us. I can't remember. Well, one of the things is how do you generate enough leads? Like, what are the activities that okay. you do? How do you do marketing to okay. outside of your area? Is that different so, than sales process? It is a little bit. Okay. Because marketing is lead gen. It's, it's in there, but okay. let's highlight it. So, I thought it was under the same umbrella. So that's why I didn't say well, anything. OK, so, okay, so marketing. But we want, okay, OK, that's a really good point. It's sometimes better to be more granular. Sales okay. process might be too broad. Okay. So let's call it uh, marketing and promotions. Okay. They're slightly That's good. different. Those are good. I like marketing and promotions. So for complexity and pain. You need to say good job. Oh, good job, Thanks. Christo. <laughs> nice work. You're awesome. Thanks. I feel much better for participating in this no. exercise. I know you didn't get a lot of Thanks. validation as growing up, but right, you know what? Right. We'll get you. I appreciate it. All right. So what's the next one? For, for complexity and pain, what, do, what does he need? What, what would you need in order? You've been doing web a if, lot, Rashad. What if I need? hire more people, it'll be less pain for me. OK, that's a great one. So what do you need in order to hire people and to put them to work? Um, like able to manage 
an HRD maybe or like maybe do HR myself. So you need to hire and manage people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hire and manage teams. Okay. And what and the fear is that it gets painful with that. So let's just leave those three and let's. Don't, don't you need to be able to manage complexity and pain? Don't you need a clearly defined process that there you, you share with the mm -hmm. team and the client? Perfect. Is that Thank right? you, Christo. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Clear, Thanks. I feel validated a for you. Clear, <laughs> clear process. Awesome. So just with those three, let's just do this exercise just with those. But one thing that, that I wanted to point out, and we can do the, uh, how are we doing on time, Aaron? We could do another one real quick. So we do agency. How, how are the, the agency problems different? Is the person going to be a little older, maybe? A little bit. Let's do 38. 38. And female, male? Let's make Let's it female. female. And, uh, Ellen. Ellen, that's a good name. Ellen. Uh, Stafford. Ellen. Stafford, well, great. Excellent. So let's give her some challenges. What challenges does she have? And, and if you have challenges out there, or if you can relate with the profiles, let us know in the comments what are your challenges. Well, what challenges are you going to have at 38, growing an agency? I mean, I had some of these. You have family responsibilities. Uh, you have partners now. You probably hit a ceiling, ah. and you're, you're, you're trying to figure out how to get to the next level. So maybe you're three to five people, and what started out to be a great ramp is now kind of petered out. And so plateau. Yeah, you, you plateau. Hit, hit a plateau. How do you spell plateau? E-A-U. E -A -A. I'm going to do it like that. Plateaued uh, in sales or in size? In size. So you have a certain amount of projects. Cash flow, I've heard that. Like how to manage cash flow. What else? It's not that different than what Tim, Tim's going through in that he hit a ceiling with particular projects and he, need to grow, he needs to grow. They just need to grow with even bigger projects. It's just a similar problem, but just on a this, different scale. On a different scale, but also they're overwhelmed because it's so much now that they're, they used to be uh, designers and now they're being managers. So in a way, the, 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 they're overwhelmed. So managing overwhelm or managing, let's just leave those three, managing overwhelm. This space, as you're getting bigger, it, you have a, a bigger player, so it's much more competitive. Competition. So this is where you, competition is where you begin having to do things like you need to position yourself within your competition uh, to grow. And then managing overwhelm is also about uh, systemization. Sys Systemization. So now you have a bigger kitchen. So we need solutions. All right, so what are some solutions for this? Again, we call this needs. There's other ways. Another thing, there's a tons of ways to name these categories, and there's different ways that you can learn how to do this. All of them are really about identifying who the customer is, what their challenges are, and how can you solve them, and then creating a user experience based on that. Chris, let's just throw out three solutions real quick. Okay, so what we're talking about. They could be the similar, first. they could be dissimilar. Well, what's the, the so solutions to plateau and size? Plateau and size, cash flow problems, manage overwhelm systemization, competition for cash flow, contract structure can help solve that. Right? You can get paid more frequently, split up your payment schedule bigger, uh, have delivery, yeah. undelivery payments. Plateau and size, that means that you need to grow your project sizes, what does that mean? In order for me to charge more, what do I need to be able to do? You have to demonstrate higher value. Higher value, higher. So that's really sales sales uh, tools and like for example, positioning. decks, and that's also positioning. It's a big one. Sounds like a basketball court in here. I know. And, and, and I'm using a fairly thick Sharpie, but I even didn't get it to be thick enough, I, I, need it, I wanted to get the really thick one, and that's because it needs to look good on camera, but also because if you're in a, in a room, people are gonna be way over in the room. We want everybody to see this and to give you approval on this. All right, let's just take these. Here's a big thing. Once you have a lot of these, and you might have 10 of these because there's 10 people in the room, or you might have you know 10 of these, what do you do next? Prioritize. You prioritize. I choose three completely arbitrarily. Here's why. At the end of the day, you can't necessarily build everything. You want to actually really funnel things through priorities. You also want to push people to choose priorities. It doesn't mean that the seventh one isn't going to necessarily be addressed. It means that if we have to cut it and we go back, you say, look, you selected these three as priorities. Is it OK if this becomes part of the next phase? And that's why it goes into scheduling. So typically, right. you, you would vote. When you say arbitrarily, you would vote, You would right? vote. You would say, you like, would what seems like the most pressing challenge and solution that we can provide? And then we would 
see like everybody seems to like be in agreement. The top one's always easy. Number two is pretty easy. The third one, Lung Ha Ming Hong, that's where the facilitator may come in. It's like, I'm hearing these two things. I think it's more this. And then you guide them through that process. Okay? Yeah. So it's like a hog auction. It's like, okay, who's supposed for this one? Hey, okay. All right. So now let's go on to choosing. Let's just choose two per category, even though three is a good one. So out of uh, story challenges, and it's Chris and I, we're, let's say we're all here. Transition from small to extra large, totally one of the big things. Uh, complexity and pain, is there a better way? Growth, increased revenue. These are similar, these two are similar. Complexity and pain, what would be the next most important one? In terms of their challenges? Yeah. Well, the transition from small to extra large is a big, broad it's category. It's a big topic, yeah. So, that's probably when you said, let's get more granular, we should have done that because we would have okay. had four or five So what's, what the, I think the transition points some of them here. So let's say the transition is the main priority. Uh, so it's basically this. Let's just, let's just consolidate that okay. into one. Um, I, let's just use, let's use growth and complexity. So what I'm doing is as a facilitator for the sake of being able to move forward, I'm saying the top two that we have here, which is the transition to growing or growth, and complexity and pain, we're going to use those two as uh, the main ones. Then here, basically, we would have marketing and promotions, a clear process is a solution for this. And these two, sales and marketing, I'm consolidating them into one. Is that fair for everybody? Yeah? Yeah. OK, great. So for the agency, cash flow is a big one. Do we all agree? Boat, boom, and then I think so here we have complexity and pain. Here we I have like competition. competition. Yeah, exactly. That's exact. We're thinking exactly the same thing. So for the agency, we're going to address cash flow and competition. So then solutions hires this one. Uh, the, 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 these two, contract structure and positioning are the solutions to those two. Great. So they're slightly different. And there's a OK to do that because now, the, if you're addressing it for here, you're also going to address it for this customer. So there's a lot of uh, push sometimes from clients to do a lot of customer profiles. We're going to need to do 10 because we have all these different type of customers. At the end of the day, you don't need to do that many because a lot of the needs get highlighted by one. Uh, if you do statistics, you know that there's a sample size, a smaller sample size. Well, let's caveat that, that the more complex the site is, the more profiles you build for something like this to seem to be just fine, right? Like yeah. if you're building one for Three is an a airline. Number. That's a lot of different types of users, right? But you still want to have, true, but you still want to have your archetypal primary right. customer profiles. Okay. Like, for example, Virgin uh, uh, America isn't for everyone. It's for, like, young professionals. No, I don't mean it like that. I mean, there might be the mom, the professional planner, the Got travel it. agent. Got there's, it. like, yes. there's different archetypes. Between three and five. If you're at 10 or 15 customer profiles, it's becoming it's unwieldy. Nine. What I usually do is I might do them with the customer, like, do eight. I've done this and then looked at all of them and said, what are the similarities, and consolidated them into five or into three. All right, so now let's do a screen. I mean, we have one over here already pre-cooked, but let's just draw it again. And you can do this in many, many different ways. So what's a question, Chris, that you would have when it comes to, Jose, how do you deal with translating it now into a screen? Well, I've never seen you do this, so I don't even know. Why okay. Do it? So yeah. I'll describe a couple of the things. One, the format, like mobile or like web, is really dictated. You guys answered this very well by the customer, actually. So like, if this, this is we need our goal is right now for to do our main site, right? Yeah. The schoolrocks.com. So the format is a website, uh, and that means that there's a bunch of different already acceptable formats to select from. So you do that from research and from preference. All right. So let's say you're the client, Chris. You and me are the clients. How do we want our website to look structurally? What do you mean? We want it to be a long page, sales page. Do oh, I like the long sales page. One like, and it's a film. You want long, a long sales page? Long. Great. Okay, so there's that made the decision as to what kind of page it is. So that means that we have a hero module at the top, and then we're going to have multiple modules to go in the sales process. All right. So let's talk about that, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to look actually at some other parts of the process. So the reason why all of this stuff, I like to have it all up at one time, is because when you have the team in the room and you're facilitating, if you have the definition of the brand. If you have you know, who the customer profiles are, and if you have your business goals, you can immediately look at all of them because you're actually designing, you're designing live with your actual customer in the room sometimes. You could be doing this with your team. You could be doing this with your designer. You could be doing this with your developers. But if you're, at a, uh, if you're a designer, a graphic designer who's used to sitting in their desk in a dark room, which I've seen this when I walk into some studios, 
working on your stuff, getting feedback from a manager behind you know, uh, your shoulder, this is not that. This is actually everybody working together to come up with a design. The design, and this is again where it goes, is this design or is this just like a sketch on a piece of paper? In this exercise, we have the things that they're going to have as objections. Is this for me? Does it work? And what is it exactly? So in the sales process, you're going to have this is to capture attention up here, this top thing, because that's what you see. What's the next thing, Chris, going to be? Objection one. Which is, is this for me? This is the qualification. And in terms of decision making, what do we literally put into a sales site like this that we already have, like right here? Well, usually this next section is to self-select the audience. Yes. You have to tell who you are. Then you can say, this is me. Self-selection. So, yes. So does it sound right. like I'm a freelancer or an agency? If it does, then I'm going to keep going. If not... So basically it is for the freelancer. The freelancer. I'm going to just sketch it in like that real quick, so for the sake of time. And here is the agency. And what am I going to have below it? I'm going to have what that means. So I'm going to have uh, uh, the challenges. So you're looking to grow. You're looking to do X, Y, Z. So let's actually define those real quick, but I'm going to talk about my process. Up here, you're going to need a value proposition. The value proposition is basically what is the shortest way for me to say, hey, what are your needs? So if you look at these, the specific needs, those are usually the value proposition, meaning you could have the value proposition be the challenge. Like, what is the challenge you're having? For example, uh, grow your design business. I'm basing that on, so if I were to highlight a value proposition from here, also, we have it in the you know, confidence. Grow is one of the attributes we have in our value uh, when we did the brand attributes. So it's growth, right? Would yeah. it be fair to just test out a value proposition? Grow your design business. It's super simple. Nobody? Input? Yes, maybe. Send well, let, let me just point this out here. Um, as I'm reading a book on copywriting, the headline is supposed to grab your attention yeah. and appeal to the person's self-interest. Yes. So a lot of designers make a mistake. They just talk about themselves. Yes. And I don't really care about you. Yes. If you can't help me solve my problem, I'm moving on to the next site. Yes. So I'm a design business. I want to grow. Great. More detail. This is what I sound like and this is what I look like, right? So do you want to, do you want to uh, increase, so here you would go, increase you know, sales might be one of them. That might not be the first one we try. No, so you would talk about their challenges. Okay, so Are you struggling yes. to grow your design practice and whatever else you've written up there? Struggling to grow, is the com uh, are projects getting more complex and painful? Uh, is, is there a better is there, way? Is there a better way? Boom. Those are the three entry points that you're going to have right there. I'm taking them directly from my customer profile into the copy. So who do you have in the room if you have a larger team? You have, you know, you're going to have copywriters, you're going to have art directors, you're going to have all the people. All right, so for the agency, uh, cash flow, competition, positioning, what are the questions that we're going to ask the agency? If you've plateaued, you know, have you plateaued? You know, it's like, so, uh, have you hit a ceiling? Have you hit a ceiling? Hit a ceiling. Uh, process, com, uh, uh, it, is it hard to uh, differentiate between your competitors or something like that? You're, are you having a hard time differentiate between your competitors? Um, managing complexity. Managing, uh, hiring actually said number one. Hiring and managing projects. And managing projects, okay. So here we so have you hit a ceiling? Um, hi, are you an agency? Have you hit a ceiling? Um, are you having a problem hiring and, and uh, managing, and hiring people and managing your projects? So those are already questions you have. All right, so in the third one here, what are we, what are we gonna give them here? Do you wanna do objection two? What's objection two, Chris? Well, is this for me? Is this for self identifying, me? right? All right. And then does this really work? What is it exactly? So maybe, maybe, one. maybe, what is this? What is this? Okay, so basically this would be the solution. I like what is, is it for last. Okay, what is it for like, last? Okay. Objection, objection. You got me really interested. Now tell me exactly what it is. 
So does it work? Um, uh, the question there, how are different ways to actually answer the does it work question? You have, you have testimonials, you have what is? You have, uh, what is it called? Uh, product benefits. Empirical data. Product benefits. And social and proof. Social proof. For the, um, for the freelancer and for the agency, uh, for, the, for the sake of, 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 of argument, let's do two things. Let's do it backwards. So you want to do the product last? Yeah. Okay, so. Or near last. Near last. So uh, anecdotal or like uh, uh, testimonials. So here you, you can say. Marks. You, you can say, I increased, you know, my sales by X percent. And you have the picture of the person, and then here you have the support uh, of an agency. You know, we repositioned and grew our agency, yada, yada, yada. And you have that, boom, boom. So you can change this module to different places, but this is already basically saying, here are the things that I did. And instead of us saying, here's the product benefits or here are the benefits, you're immediately having somebody else say it. And Chris is um, drawing the people, which is uh, something that you can actually do in the in the in the, pro in the, in the sketch. I sketch Maybe pretty messy, but you can get really you can get you can have a logo. Um, so what else can we do, Chris? Here. So the next thing is, does it really work? Is it for me? What is it exactly? Now you can get to what it what, what is it is. Okay. So what is it? What is it? What is it? So here we can have the different products. Now we know what those are because we have them. Let me draw that. Can but I let's do, do those. Yeah. So you have. So the product is a kit that you're gonna get. You have two kits. You have uh, agency kit and you have uh, core right. strategy kit. So there's a booklet. There you go. You can keep talking those out, draw. So, 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 so there you want to have what I call again tit for tat. So you have the two problems, then you have some of, and, and you can put product benefits instead of testimonials there. You can put the testimonials afterwards. You're going to have to actually test different ways of doing this landing page. Coming up with it is not a finite process. So I am a graphic designer. Chris is a graphic designer by training. We didn't get taught this at school. Right? Did you get taught this at school? No. How to go from a customer profile all the way to copy? Like, I didn't think I was a good copywriter even. But what I heard Chris say, and I'll do a testimonial on Chris's behalf, he said is, before I didn't know how to write copy. Now I know exactly how to write to that particular customer. And we all know how to write English, most of us do at least, um, because of the customer profiles. So in user experience, what's the first word in user experience? User. User. So everything is focused around this. Now, again, the reason why the process is set up so that over here, with, we put the camera over here, you have all your variables like what your brand is, who your, who, what your brand is, who your users are, and what your goals are, and then you move on to the center, which is where you're actually sketching some of the solutions, putting up the boards of your solutions, and then on the other side, you have the actual execution, and I, and I noted this to everyone, to the audience earlier, the reason why you have all three when you're developing software, and Rishab, you know this pretty well, why is that? That you would have, that you would have the input, the what you produce, and the output all next to each other visually. You can visualize exactly how it will look and like exactly what you are aiming for. Yeah, you can visualize everything and you can move with an entire team through the process and it's going to change. That's the reason why all these tools like Stickies and Chris said you know, at the beginning that you, it's because you can reposition everything. Uh, that's why you use these. It's a living process. So when you see a, a Google, an image of Google's design process, when you see an image of a software company, um, uh, and it has all these stickies and all these things and you know whiteboards. It's because design is no longer about this idea of an end product. Design is now about this idea. Look at that, man. Chris does should do like live sketching at conferences. So you have the two products. This should look awesome. You, beautiful metaphor, like an iPad it's and iPad. Have growth. That's really awesome. Nice job, dude. Like you should be. A, you should be a designer. I should be a designer. Or yeah, something. you should be a designer or something. So I'm gonna end with this quote from Steve Jobs: Creativity. It's just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something, some connections between things. It seemed obvious to them after a while. Chris, let me ask, put it back to you. You always ask me, how, what, you know, what's your process that you're going through? What did you get out of this? Does this even help at all? I think there's a big gap between these profiles that you guys build from using Core 
and then not connecting it to this. There seems to be a pretty big gap between you guys doing this and then doing this. I think Jose did a very good job of taking this and showing you exactly how we structure it. And it's all through the Thank lens you. of the customer. User-centric design is all about the user of the customer. And so stop talking about yourself, talk, stop talking about your software and your hardware, unless that's a question that they have. If that's a challenge, like what hardware do you use, then talk about that. But in most cases, it's not. This is where your skills and empathy are going to matter a lot. You have to pay attention to what the customers want and need and the solutions that are going to solve that and phrase it in a way that they can absorb the story. What, what did you guys think? Reflect on this. They, they may not know. As a student. Right? Um, I guess I was wondering, so here you're focusing on one single page and yeah. I want to know how user experience fits in with the rest of the design process for the website, including like the site structure and like what other pages there are and you know like how is are there steps that that might come before doing this landing page that are also a part of the UX. It's a good question. That's the next episode, which oh. is <laughs> with, which is dealing with taxonomy, site structure uh, based on actual customer profiles, prioritization, like what features are in it, what features are out, uh, planning, all those things are part of it, and you use a similar process. Can I ask a follow-up question to what you're asking? Now, he, Jose had asked at the very beginning, what's the structure of the site? And in a couple of years ago, it was multiple pages and lots of things to deal with. There has been a shift towards something that is kind of more, like, easier for somebody to use and is a story in itself and it unfolds just by scrolling down. It's very easy and kind of driven by the client. So there's nothing for them to get confused by. The call to action would be at the bottom here. So each one of these things is a little story that takes them through the customer journey and then we, we do the call to action. So that's so, a consolidation of one page. Yeah, it's all in one page versus But like that's not the entire pages. system though. You have links that go to the e-commerce store. You have links that go to a landing page for the products. So we worked on that. Uh, Rishab and I worked on that on what's called the product architecture, or it's called, uh, in this case, you know, uh, there's a bunch of different part vendors that we're using to build the site, like different services. So you have to actually define that. A large part of that is functional. Like, okay, when somebody clicks on buy, where do they buy it? Do we build an e-commerce page? Do we actually use a service? So there's a lot of questions that dovetail with the technical. So I'm collaborating with Rishab, who's a computer science major uh, from UCLA. And he and I are discussing the pros and cons of the platforms that we use. And then we draw it out, like a diagram of all the different platforms. That's a technical architecture issue. Now comes what's on every one of those pages. So we repeat this process on each of those pages. What's the format? What needs to be on it? The best thing to do is to copy existing formats. In creativity, that's like, whoa, you don't want to copy somebody else's work because you, it's about originality. When it comes to functional aspects of a website, there are things that are proven to work. And you want to have those general structures. Just take the structure. You take the structure, you can change the color, you can change fonts, you can change all these different things, you can move the structure around a little bit. But you don't want to necessarily be the guy who has this unique thing because it's not necessarily about how it looks visually, it's how it displays on a format, like on a phone. But just think about a car. A car has four wheels, a steering wheel, a drive gear or motor, and it needs to work the same from manufacturer to manufacturer. They're copying each other's structure, but everything else about the experience is different. The way it looks, the way it runs, the way it sounds, everything's different, but we don't have a problem with that. And I'm glad you brought that up because designers are like, no, I'm going to reinvent the web. I'm going to make web 4.0. This is what designers think. And then they create a complete disaster. It doesn't function, they spend all their time re-engineering something that didn't need to be fixed. Now the time that you do that is maybe there's new emerging technology or platforms you have to start thinking about. That's the time to think about new structures. Yeah, he hit it on the nail. Right, like responsive. Yeah. Now, yeah. now everybody's on mobile devices and then you're designing for two, three screens at a time. So that's what's driving the function and the structure. Thank you guys. If you have questions about user experience, ask below what other episodes about user experience you want to see. Was this a valuable topic? How did we do? How are we doing? Do you like my hat? I don't know. Whatever you want to comment on below. And what else? Subscribe. Subscribe. Like this video if you like it. And comment. Share it. That's it. We'll see you guys next time.